I have with me today Janet Thompson. We just don't wait and see, uh, and we don't thank God for answering those little steps of pleading. We're just constantly asking for the next. Hello, welcome to Heritage of Truth. My name is Patty. I have with me today Janet Thompson. She has written a series of books, and um, I would like, we have two of the latest books with us today. One of them is called Lois and Eunice, the other one, Sarah, Rachel, and Hannah. And um, before we get into uh, these two books and the others in your series, just tell me a little bit about yourself. Well, Patty, I'm um, a grandmother of 11. Wow. <laughs> yeah, and the mama of four children. 16 years ago, I started a ministry called Woman to Woman Mentoring. And as churches began to want to know how we were making this ministry work when others had not been successful, I wrote a resource called Woman to Woman Mentoring, how to start, grow, and maintain a mentoring ministry in your church. Yes. And that is really my passion, that one generation would pass on to the next the things that the wonders that they've seen God do in their life from you know Psalm 145 4 and then of course the uh, the theme of that ministry is Titus 2 3 to 5 and again it's where the spiritually older women are to teach and train the spiritually younger women and as that ministry began to grow and the resource um, was taken pretty much around the world and churches yes. began to start mentoring ministries then I um, was able to go out and speak at these churches help them get it started and one of the things that um, I noticed right away as mentors and mentees, we call them M&Ms. Yes. <laughs> and we always have M&M and candy around all the time. But um, the mentors and mentees, we fondly call them M&Ms. And as they were meeting and uh, getting started in their mentoring relationship, we would oftentimes give them a suggestion of books to read or Bible studies to do. And one day my husband said, well, have you ever thought about writing a Bible study yourself and maybe looking at what God said uh, in the Bible about mentoring and looking wow. at mentoring relationships in the Bible. And I said, no, absolutely. I've never thought about that. But, you know, as our uh, often does, God uses our husbands to yes. speak to us. And so I thought, well, all right, maybe I should kind of look. I said, I told him I would look in the Bible and see if I found any. Well, I found 12 just like that and wow. you know they weren't all women mm -hmm. some were you know like Paul and Barnabas and mm -hmm. but I said oh maybe this is something that I'm to do and um, Lois face to face with Lois and Eunice nurturing faith mm -hmm. in your family Let's show this here mm-hmm nurturing faith in your family right mm -hmm. and then um, face to face with Sarah Rachel and Hannah pleading with God yes. and they um, each have a, 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 a different focus. Sarah, Rachel, and Hannah, we are seeing so much on TV. I see it in the news very often. There's ads on TV and stuff about the um, problem of infertility mm -hmm. and uh, how that really touches, um, how it affects the very being of a woman and her husband. And so. interesting that you say that because I just was a finalist uh, this year at ASA for my book, um, Dear God, Why Can't I Have a Baby? A Companion Guide for Couples on the Infertility Journey. I wrote that book focused on infertility because I had two of my children, two of my daughters, suffered with infertility. And so their story runs through that book. Yes. And so as I was writing this book on Sarah, Rachel, and Hannah, I understood um, just that deep, having written that book and having the couple sharing their story in that um, the almost, as Rachel said, give me a baby or I'll die. Yes. And um, as I was reading and writing, pleading with God, these three women, Sarah, Rachel, and Hannah, did all struggle with infertility. But the study is written so that um, it, you can we can see how they each handled their problem, but that um, it's pleading with God for anything that you're pleading with. And we so often follow the pattern of these three women. And... You know, Sarah and Rachel pretty much took matters into their own hand. God was working too slow for them. Yes. They, each of them um, had a surrogate, said, you know what, this isn't just, Sarah laughed and said, no way could I have a baby. And even though she had been told 
that Abraham, her husband, would be the father of many nations, through her, through them, mm -hmm. she uh, wasn't willing to wait. And so we see the result of her taking God, you know, taking circumstances yes. into her own hands. And, you know, Ishmael, you know, the surrogate son, um, representing a country that's still feuding with, um, you know, Isaac. Isaac <laughs> yeah, yes. the, the, the countries that he represented. And yet um, God makes good out of that as he always does. Even when we choose to do those kinds of things, um, the miracle of her, of Sarah having Isaac at such an old age, only God could have done that. Yes. And so that's what I really want women to realize that God hasn't gone silent, that he has a plan and he has a purpose. And it's not always, many times not in our timing. Mm -hmm. And of course with Rachel, she did something very similar. She did not wait as long as Sarah did. And um, she was, it was her jealousy of watching um, her sister, Leah have so many children while well, she didn't. And of course, I wrote in the infertility book, when when you want something, you think everybody around you has it but you. Yes. And even though that's not the case so much, you're so focused in on that. And it can be whether you're looking for, pleading for a husband, you're pleading for a child, you're you know, pleading for a job, you're pleading for your health, everyone else looks healthy, other, other marriage looks happy. And um, as Rachel said, you know, to Isaac, you know, give me a, a baby or I'll die. I mean, there are people that are, we know that sense of desperation and mm -hmm. depression can yes. lead us, you know, to feeling almost suicidal. And then as so often happens when God gave Rachel, you know, Joseph, instead of saying, thank you, God, thank you. I'm so happy that you answered my pleading. She turned right around and said, but I really want another yeah. one. Yeah, <laughs> you know. And yes. of course, that sadly ended in her death, you know, yes. having that second child. And so, you know, we do that in so many times. We we just don't wait and see, uh, and we don't thank God for mm -hmm. answering those little mm -hmm. steps of pleading. We're just constantly asking for the next. And then Hannah. She had a completely different she completely way. different. <laughs> yes, Hannah, you know, went to the church, and she was praying, and she enlisted help. You know, she said to Eli, she told him her story. She went to her pastor and she asked for him to pray for her. And even though her, you know, she was dealing with jealousy and, and she made a vow with God. Now, and, you know, so many times we bargain with him, you know, well, if you'll do this, then I'll do that. And, um, but she made a vow. Hers was mm -hmm. a true vow that I will give the child, you know, I will dedicate this child back to you, which yeah. she followed through on. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, she was blessed. She had, when she did have Samuel, and she did give him back to Eli to raise, and you know God did give her um, more children. And the interesting part is how the others in our life, like the husbands in these situations, oftentimes when we're so upset and we want something so badly, our husband's just to keep us happy, or our fathers or whoever's in our life, okay, okay, let's go along with it, I'll do what you want. But when Hannah said, you know, I, I, did, I just need to, we need to pray about this, and um, her husband was, he was like, he went with that, you know, he, he agreed with her. Yes. And, um, you know, they prayerfully prayed for this. And I know so often it's like, we want to know what is God's will for our life. And um, I have another book, Praying for Your Prodigal Daughter, Hope, Help, and Encouragement for the Hurting Parents. And one of the things I learned through praying for a prodigal was to know God's will and not just my will was to pray God's word back to him, to be in his word yes. and to pray his word. Yes. And you begin to see his will taking place and to realize that there's a purpose. He always has a purpose and a plan mm -hmm. for us. And it's um, not always our plan. Mm -hmm. He's going to many times answer it in a way that we don't expect. It's even far beyond what we could have ever thought It's of. hard for us to know sometimes what he has planned for that child. Mm -hmm. And we have to let his will be done all along the way exactly. in order to bring them to that place where he'll use them. And I, I just heard an awesome on the waiting and being God's waiting room when we're just pleading and begging. Um, I heard something just recently, just this weekend, when June Hunt was speaking to our group at Austin. She talked about an anchor, how important an anchor is. But, you know, the anchor when it's up on the boat has no use. <laughs> but it's when we can't see it that it's grounding yes. us. And so when it's sometimes when we can't see God, that's when he's actually doing the work. And, you know, that's when our peace comes with our patience. 
of knowing that he loves us so much he isn't going to just leave let us you know go short what a beautiful truth isn't yes, that, that is, and that just that really hit to. me mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. great oh. okay this other book uh lois and eunice yes uh, Lois and Eunice, the, the subtitle on this one is Nurturing Faith in Your Family. And Lois and Eunice were the, um, was the grandmother and the mother of Timothy. Mm-hmm. And this is the only time in the Bible, and especially in the New Testament, where the word grandmother is ever used. Lois has that distinction. It'll say the mother of the mother of the mother. Yes. But Lo- Lo- Paul thought so much of Lois and um, the legacy that she left through Timothy, that he actually refers to her and gives that, you know, just that honor of being a grandmother. And he attributes Timothy's faith to being passed down through Lois, who was a new believer when Paul yes. came to town and was sharing the gospel, but she passed down to Eunice. And Eunice's husband was a Greek who was not a believer. And so she was unequally yoked there. And yet we have this you, we have that the faith was so strong that between Lois and Eunice that they managed to still pass down the scriptures and that new faith down to Timothy. And so sometimes, you know, we're going to reach obstacles mm-hmm. in passing down our faith to the next generation. But to be faithful in that, that, you know, there's so many different ways that we can do it as grandmothers and as mothers. Mm-hmm. You know, God, there's just so many opportunities. I talk about a lot of those in the book. But... Even if you're not near your grandchild, um, you can still Skype with them, and you, the gifts that you give them can yes. still be spiritually based, and you can pray for them. I have a, I pray for my grandchildren. I have 11 grandchildren, as I mentioned earlier. I pray for them all by name every single day. I pray scripture for them, mm-hmm. praying God's will for them. And, um, you know, my children will say, I just saw something different happening in the kids, and I'm like, well, I've been praying for them. And to talk to them about... Um, about Jesus in their life from an early age. I know sometimes they, we feel like, oh, they're just so little, but that's when they're like little sponges. Mm-hmm. You know, that's when they're going to remember, and that's when they they haven't had any obstacles put in their way as far as, as believing mm-hmm. you know, in Jesus. Well, thank you so much. Um, um, I have a grandson. He is lives several hours away from me. Okay. And um, I, he, we, uh, sometimes we talk about the difference between the things that I can give to him and the things that his other grandmother. She's there to take him for ice cream. Mm-hmm. You know, she mm-hmm. has that day to day relationship right. with him that is so special. But when I'm when I come or when he comes to visit me, then we have a concentrated several days that we right. can do something special together. And, and he can see how you live your life. You yes. Know, and see that how you um, love the Lord and all of the things that you do in your life. And I I also want to mention that it is uh, also the family of God because Paul was not um, Timothy's real father, but Timothy was like, I call it a son of the heart. And so Paul didn't have children, but he reached in knowing that Timothy didn't have a spiritual father. And there are so many spiritual orphans in our churches that we yes. need to reach out to and just love them and mentor them and be that grandma and the Lord to them or that mother even in the Lord to them. Yes. Um, where can we find the books? The Do books, you have a website? I have a website. Information? Yes. Uh, it's uh, woman, and that's W-O-M-A-N, to to woman mentoring dot com. Thank you so much for being here, Janet. I really you, appreciate Karen. it. I'm looking forward to, um, and I'm sure other women would be too, uh, sharing this with some friends. Yes, please do, and with the Bible study um, leaders at your churches and your women's ministry also. Great. Thank you. Mm-hmm.